Peter Rubin was at the E3 conference with Bigad. He's here to talk about his June cover story, the inside story of Oculus Rift and how virtual reality became reality. It appears in the June issue of Wired magazine and is available at wired.com. Peter, welcome. Okay. How would you, how would you describe the appearance of the experience of virtual reality? Well, the word that that Oculus uses and a lot of people are using now is this concept of presence. In the past, you would put goggles on whoever made them, and there would there would be screens in front of your face, um, and and there wasn't there was an illusion there, but but not much more than that. Now you really are enveloped in this world, whatever that world is. Maybe it's a video game. Maybe you're in a movie theater watching a movie on an IMAX size screen. But I wanna, you're really there. I want to ask you about the young man who's featured on the cover mm -hmm. photo because he's fascinating. Palmer Lucky, he's oh, yeah. a, a kind of a quirky genius. Mm -hmm. How did he come up with this idea? What did he think was missing? Because in the past we'd heard about these headsets, but everyone said there was vertigo. There was issues with being in that and feeling dizzy. There's always been discomfort that's been associated with virtual reality. Now, now Palmer Lucky was this homeschooled kid. Uh, as a teenager, he modified game consoles for friends. He fixed iPhones. He was always a tinkerer. But he also always wanted virtual reality. He grew up wanting to be inside the games he played. Right. So one of the, the early solutions that he came up with was magnifying the image so much so that a small display would actually feel like it wrapped around your face. Right. After that was solved, it really became cutting down the delay, which is called latency, and that's one of the most important things to cutting down on the, the simulator sickness that you feel. So as time has gone on and, and iterations within the company, they've effectively solved most of those problems that have led to discomfort in the past. Now it's just a, a, the point of getting it out to the public. This is the sixth generation of his headset, and, and so he's finally solved these problems. So it, we're, a, we're less than a year away from this? Could be. They're still not giving a date. Uh, a lot of people thought it was going to come this year. That window is closing fast. So it's, it's looking like it's going to be next year. With the, with the money that's come in, Facebook bought them early this year. And with that money, they're going to be able to add a number of improvements that they hadn't thought were going to be financially feasible. So I think that's part of the delay as well. Big Ad sort of talked in the piece a little bit about the alternate uses of this. But it was so interesting to see Zuckerberg post something saying this is how we could see doctors this is how we could go to school in another country and learn about something from a real foreign teacher mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, for him, this is the platform on which everybody's going to be communicating. Yeah. It's not about having Facebook in virtual reality. It's about being there to help guide this new platform that is going to become the default. I mean, we're very used to screens now and, and smartphone screens being the, the window through which we mediate the world. That's going to change now that we have something that's so much more immediate and present for ourselves. Right. What always strikes me when I see something like this, given the pace of change now, is if we're here now, now, where are we going to be in five or ten years? Oh, it's I mean, and they're very quick to say, everybody who works with Oculus and even Mark Bowles is quick to say that we're at the infancy of this new technology. Not in the infancy in the sense that it just began, because people have been trying to crack this problem for 30 years. It's now that we've made this a consumer product, what's next? Certainly not the sexiest thing to see, but it is cool. Peter Rubin, thank you so much. Thank you.